Good evening, everybody. I'll call this meeting to order for April the 11th, 2023. Result of the agenda for the April 11th, 2023 regular meeting of council be adopted. Moved by Councillor Wojciech, second by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> we'll be over here for a while. Um, I guess uh, to begin with, go stats tonight and pull off this and keep the series going, right? So good luck to them tonight. Result of the minutes of the March 21st, 2023 regular council meeting and the March 28th, 2023 special meeting be approved. Moved by Councillor Balbeck, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. So let's move all down to 6 and 6.1. <clears throat> Result of the town of Swanover accept the letter dated March the 20th, 2023 from Andrew Smith, Minister of Municipal Relations regarding the 2023 Municipal Operating Grant. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Morial, or Deputy Mayor Morial. Um, I just want to thank the provincial government for ending the multi-year freeze on this. It's been uh, years of work by municipalities and AMM to uh, get this freeze on uh, municipal funding removed and working forward to an agreement on predictable escalators moving forward. So uh, my appreciation uh, to the provincial government for recognizing our request and taking the freeze and giving us the significant increase that is there that shows in this book, so. Okay, thank you. Uh, further discussion? Councilor Mackley. Uh, my question is the $524,680.64, is this what our last budget review had reflected in the budget or is it a different number from? You guys should have had that number about that time, did you know? Yeah, uh, we did, yeah, it, it still is estimated, but yes. Okay, so it is what we had? Okay. That's all I wanted to double check. Okay. And just echoing uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Morio's comments and uh, the, uh, uh, the, the board that I, I'm grateful to be sitting on with the EMM, uh, spent a lot of time lobbying uh, on our behalf and all municipalities across the province of Manitoba, and we are grateful for this. Uh, the number had been mentioned about $524,000. Uh, it will definitely help us in uh, maintaining our, uh, you know, if it's the infrastructure, however we decide uh, that we use the, the money as. But definitely the municipal, or the AMM has done an outstanding job of uh, lobbying on our, on our behalf. So kudos to them. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.2. Result of the letter from the Association of Manitoba Municipalities dated March the 13th, 2023, regarding canoe rebate be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Is this rebate done annually, quarterly, or? Annually. Annually. So you can see there that our rebate, as you know, that's from our purchases that we make through the trading company for the AMM. Uh, we will receive $4,928, so uh, it's, uh, it's uh, good for us to get back and, and supporting the AMM as well. So, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> 6.3. Result of the letter dated March the 23rd, 2023, from the Honorable Audrey Gordon, Minister of Health, regarding an installation status update for the computed to topography, graphic, I can't even say that, scanner of the Swan Valley CT scan. Swan Valley Health Care Center be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, second by Councillor White. Discussion? Councillor White. Well, th thank you for the government for doing this. But I read that line and it says, operational by late 2024. Now, June of uh, this 
past year they committed to this, I find that unacceptable, that it takes a year and a half to have this done. We have offered uh, from our community as a whole one million dollars. They've offered two, so I think a letter should go back to uh, Minister Gordon saying hey, thank you so much, but how can it take two years to buy something, bring it up here and put it in a room that's fixed and waiting for them and has lead lines already? I, well, I'm, uh, I'm quite disappointed with that letter. Correction, it was the announcement was made in July of 2022. Well, I meant two still weeks. the same. Uh, uh, we have been receiving updates from Prairie Mountain Health and Shared Health as well on the progress, and, and they've gone through, uh, I guess, an RFP for the purchasing of the CT equipment through the province. So there's a process for that, and then, of course, going through that. I'm not defending the process of how long it does take, but right now, as we look at it would look like we probably won't see this operation till 2024. Councillor, I, I don't think I was finished. Fine. I absolutely uh, support Councillor White on that one. That is actually one of my questions: is why is it taking so long? I would actually support him too with that. We need to follow up and find out why. Uh, from what I, from what I took away from. The communication provided is one it sounded like they have to come out and determine what type of CT scanner will go in there well I'm not in the medical field but how many different CT scanners are there for an option and it sounds like that decision process might be part of what's delaying it and then there was talk of making sure it's fitted properly for the CT scanner but and then there would be training required but can we not expedite the training at the same time that CT scanner is being acquired so that we can maybe shorten that time window. So those were some of the additional concerns and questions I had for reading that documentation. So I would concur with Councillor White that maybe we could follow up and ask for some of those questions and can we not expedite some of these? Go ahead. In discussion with local medical professionals, I believe one is already available. Two will take the training upon arrival of the CT scan, why would they take the training before the equipment's here that they would be trained to use? So late 24, 2024, I, I, I'm having a real problem and I, I think, uh, uh, I know our MLA is, is not happy with any of these timelines. I've read the reports and the updates. I am not happy with it. It's, the RFPs are done. I believe they purchased them, bring it to Swan River, put it in a room and make this happen already. Like another 12 months? I, I think a, a letter, a soft letter of concern relative to the longevity of making this happen, I'm not happy with it. Further discussion? Just for Council's information, we did get an update from the PMH CFO <coughs> stating that the CT vendor, the, the sign-off is, is still not complete. The contract is awarded, but it's not signed, which means design can't proceed until the CT scanner is completely finished. So that. That's just what we're getting from him. Uh, once, once, it is, once the contract is done, then design can happen because design matters depending on which CT scanner they buy. So what we've gotten is a worst case scenario, the end of 2024. In four weeks, I'm sure we'll inquire and we might hear something different. But <coughs> Cal Cal no, Cal sir, I'm sorry, Deputy Mayor Memorial. Uh, I'm sure you guys are all aware PMH is having their board meeting here next week and the stakeholders meeting is on the 20th. Uh, I encourage you, if you have any concerns regarding the CT scanner, you can bring it forward at that time and get answers directly. And as uh, CEO Poole has just, fall 2024 um, is a worst case scenario um, outlook on that. So hopefully things go quicker than what they are. I, I agree uh, there was some foot dragging at the beginning, but things are in the process and moving along. But, uh, if you want up-to-date information, next week, um, representative from PMH, uh, along with uh, capital planning, uh, will be at that meeting uh, to answer the questions that are brought forward. Okay, uh, go ahead. Um, just wondering how long the training is and uh, who is responsible for hiring? Is that Prairie Mountain Health or is that something shared we would health. have to do? So shared health. Shared, so shared health diagnostics looks after. That's going to be another hold up if they don't get doing that right now too. Like, there's, from what I understand, there's plans to do that in conjunction on the way. 
we're getting into the weeds of this a little bit. We're just getting uh, communication from the minister on the status. Again, I think that it's been mentioned about the meeting with the CEO with Perry Mountain Health next week. One more. Wonderful idea. <clears throat> but the minister didn't say this is the worst case scenario. She says quite emph emphatically that we hope to have it operational by 2024. That's not worst case scenario what I read there. So I think she needs a letter from our, our team saying, hey, we appreciate what you're trying to do, but the, a year and a half, whatever those numbers are, is it, it, it's, it's unpalatable. Okay. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.4 resulted a uh, letter from Public Safety Canada dated March the 29th, 2023 regarding payment for RCP prior years retro retroactive costs be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood and then uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, well, I guess some of my questions overlap with what the next resolution will be, but my one main question is, if we go with the payment plan option, what is the frequency for the payment plan? Like, how often are they? Well, right now, because we put money aside last year for, I think the intention was when we had to pay for it, that we'd be paying it in full. Am I correct, uh, CFO Garita? I don't know what the details of the payment plan are. I was assuming that they give us another two years to pay it. But. I think they mentioned something like that, but with what Mayor Jacobson said, do we have money set aside in preparation to pay for this? The retroactive pay was already expensed in the year when we were told what it, what it would be. The answer is yes. Okay. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Further discussion? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, I guess I just need to convey my, I guess, disgust and displeasure with our uh, federal government over this. Um, I don't disagree that the RCMP needed a contract and need to be... Uh, paid appropriately, um, but to proceed with a contract uh, without consultation uh, to the municipal partners that they contract with, um, and then provide estimates that were significantly lower than what they negotiated with us um, is, is unbelievable. And then just to continue to make us pay for it without consultation is going against <coughs> what they're saying and what the, the spirit of the, the conversations that we had with them. So I just need to convey my displeasure with them and I believe uh, it's not only myself but uh, everybody else on the Municipal Justice Advisory Committee along with AMM and all provinces that are have municipal policing contracts with uh, the RCMP and the federal government um, are displeased with this uh, decision and hopefully uh, AMM and FCM can uh, continue the lobbying efforts to have this uh, decision reversed. Um, it's fine to be um, speaking in the budget how you're helping municipalities and putting out money for infrastructure, but then on the back end you're pulling it back and clawing it back um, where you're now delaying. So you're giving it one hand and you're stealing it or taking it back, I should say, uh, in another hand. So you're not. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll just weigh in a little bit, but I had an opportunity to speak with the regional advisor to the deputy prime minister a few weeks ago, and uh, and told him that I was not very pleased about this. Uh, AMM has already uh, has addressed the, the federal government on it, as so as FCM, and we also have a letter that we have prepared to send to the minister as well. So. Uh, I had, uh, CFO Ganita was ready to, to pay the bill, and I said, uh, let's wait. We're not done this fight quite yet. Councilor Beckley. Um, on that note, um, depending on how that all plays out, if we end up paying that bill and a resolution comes forward that 
we don't have to pay it anymore, will we get reimbursed if we end up paying that bill prior to this stuff getting worked out? Oh, I would certainly hope so, but that's why I say let's just wait a little while yet. Okay. Let, let, I, let them wiggle a little bit. If, if they do, I don't know. But Because my next question might be better suited for the next resolution, but if I'm okay to ask it now, um, my next question was going to be, is there interest included in either the payment plan or if we delay this payment, waiting to see how things pay out. We'll, we'll stay on this one, and then if you want okay. to ask, then we'll go to that one. So, further discussion, uh, Councilor Bobbitt. So, am I under the impression that there has been money put away in previous budgets to cover this? So, this would be the last budget term for that? Say that again. So, would this, is that included in this year's budget, the money that was put away to make this payment? Well, it won't, I don't, it won't appear. In this so were you putting so much away every year, or were you, did you put one lump sum down? I can't remember what that amount was. Uh, CFO Grita, we, we put one, like what we thought the, the payment okay, was going to okay. be. So there was not a mill rate really attached to it? No. Every, okay, no. that's what I mean. Thank you. Okay. I, uh, I think that answered that. CFO Grita, I don't know if you want to add anything to that. No. Okay, thank you. Okay, so all in favor? It's carried. Again, those were letters that we did receive. Result of the Royal Canadian Mounted Police email dated March the 30th, invoice dated March 31, and NPF April 1st, 2017 to March 31st, 2021, retroactive pay raise calculation be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boycha. Discussion? There you go. Um, so, based on what we discussed previously, if we withhold our payment until we see what happens with the lobbying for AMM, will we potentially be subject to an interest payment? CFO Ganita, could you ask, do they actually give a, a due date or, or a date that we must pay by because I know they gave the, the thought was uh, payment uh, methods or options. Well the invoice is payable in May but then there's the option to ask for the payment plan whatever that means that extends it to in some way to another two years March 31 2025. My thoughts would be, one, just because I don't want to end up in a position where we're potentially going to be costing the taxpayers interest because that's a pretty high bill, so even a low percentage interest will be probably a recognizable sum. Um, do we proceed with asking what the payment plan option is and whether or not there's interest involved in taking the payment plan and then maybe just making that small initial payment until things are settled uh, through the lobbying and we know once and all for sure whether or not we have to pay the bill because I just don't want to see us ending up like I don't want to pay it either but at the same time I don't want to see us incurring mm -hmm. undue interest to increase that amount that we owe. CFO Kanita, can you find that out and I think in the meantime I'll maybe I'll check with my AMM counterparts as well I'll see what the rest of the, um, the province or municipality is doing. Okay. Okay, further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Six point six. Resolve that the letter dated March thirty first, two thousand and twenty three from the municipal Minister of Municipal Relations regard, regarding the mobility disadvantaged transportation program final operating grant for two thousand and twenty two be received. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Um, Councillor Medwood. Oh yeah, sorry, I forgot to raise my hand. <laughs> um, the, this is in regards to handy transit? Yes. <clears throat> okay, and is this, is, is this on par with what was expected? Uh, CFO Gadida, how does that compare? That's what yeah, they, they they pay thirty 
7.5% of operating expenses. So that's what we, the, the figure is what was required to meet that percentage. Okay. And this is part of last year's budget or this year's budget? 2022. It's the final payment for 2022. They advance. They make an advance during the year, and then once they get the audited financial statement and, and annual report, then they pay the, the balance of what's owing. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Where are we here? 6.7. Result of the email from Western Financial Group Insurance Solutions dated March the 30th, 2023, regarding the Association of Manitoba Municipalities General Insurance Program be received. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Powell. Discussion? Councillor Medwood. Uh, the only question I have is have we received an invoice yet? Do we know what this year's actual amount? Is going to be? I think CFO Ganina told me, but I can't remember it off the top of my head. Or was that the previous years? I can't remember. CFO Ganina? He's checking. Uh, the invoice came on Saturday. Just let me bring it up. Two hundred and ninety nine thousand. And do you know off the top of your head if this is within range of what our twenty twenty three budget accounted for? Uh, it, it's higher than what than what was budgeted. Okay. Yeah, because we didn't know we didn't know at that time and we do know that all like most insurance rates are going up just well, that's, because of the that's financial why I was times and all wondering. that. So yeah. Uh, it's about 11, 11 and a half percent, I think it is. So, but and when I ask them the questions at the AMM, um, some of the municipalities, I was very curious to know how many actually opt into this program and how many that don't. And uh, majority of municipalities in Manitoba do. There's only a few, and some have backed out of it. But after a year or two, they go back in because just this it's it's a good program, and we've received some benefit. As far as rebates and all that in the past, so it's a it's a good group. So. I I don't uh, discard that at all because I was reading the letter, Mike. But I know rates are going up, so I was just wondering if uh, uh, CFO Ganita had estimated high enough, or whether we might need to rework some numbers in the <clears throat> budget that we don't have finalized yet. Right, uh, Mr. Pooley, something? No, it was just details on the insurance program, but that can be another time. Okay, yeah. Okay, so further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 6.8. Result of the amount of a public safety communication services updated, update, update dated April the 6th, 2023, be received. Moved by Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion? Councilor Medwood? No. If I remember correctly, these are the radio systems used by Fire Hall EMS. 911? No. Okay. <laughs> and are we in that category that's recognized some issues in their areas, or we are in the safe zone? Uh, maybe a fire chief could answer that question. <coughs> we definitely have issues. Okay. I can confirm. Yeah, um, as far as the PSES system, we have no issues with it. And that's from the fire side? <clears throat> that's from the fire side, yeah. And our interagency, when we talk to EMS, RCMP, we, we have no issues. Okay. okay. Further discussion? All Thank you. It's carried. Seven, seven point one. Resolved that the Director of Public Works report be received. Moved by 
Councilor Bobek, seconded by Councilor Medwood. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. You mentioned flood forecast. How are we looking so far? Uh, the forecast is calling for low chance of flooding. There is a possibility of ice jam, uh, which is pretty much every year. Uh, so we have the sandbags and sand ready if needed. Wonderful. Can I continue? Sure. Okay. The airport, um, is the uh, airport commission involved in the audit? That's the uh, there was a meeting with them because we got Wasco to do some radio training and then uh, some other training with our new safety officer. And as part of that, we had some changes to the winter maintenance plan just to make sure it was in line with what we're doing kind of thing mm -hmm. during the review. Uh, so then the, I guess that was the SMS board was involved with that. Um, and then any updates to this, because the, the audit is to do with the SMS documents, like the safety management system documents. Okay. And so that SMS board, uh, which is a safety officer and um, a rep from the public kind of thing, uh, will be involved with any findings in the audit of things that we need to change or update or whatever. These guys do lots of uh, airports all throughout northern Canada and the one guy came from Pearson, so it'll be pretty detailed. Okay, so does that involve the airport commission or they're just being kept aware of? Just kept aware, they don't have to okay. attend those meetings. It's, these guys are going through all the documents, so it's mainly the safety officer and uh, them going back and forth with the documents, just making sure that everything that we are recording and all the documents that we have are in line with what they need to be. This is operational, so the airport commission is away from the field and the operations, but they did have to approve the payment for Wasco to come do the audit, and they have to approve the audit once it's complete. Okay. Yeah. I'm just still trying to wrap my head around how all these commissions and stuff work. Uh, my next one is, uh, you mentioned training for water treatment and utility <coughs> operator. I think that was either in yours or part of uh, the foreman's. Um, what is that pertaining to? Uh, so water treatment uh, and water distribution. Uh, we're training up one of our operators to get his uh, we have two existing ones. We want to have three so that they can rotate through on the weekends. Okay. And uh, so we're just training up our third one. And for the utility operators, what does that entail? That's the training. Because uh, there was uh, there was two different ones mentioned. I think one might have come out of the four minutes report, possibly. Oh yeah, it, it, that would be the same thing. So like. I was submitting some certification for them, and then uh, Let me just double check where it says that. Yeah, so they were looking. They got the forms, filled them out, gave them to me. I submitted them, so that they're referencing the same thing. Okay, that's one of the things I just wanted to clarify. And the only other thing I have to say is great job of keeping up on the frozen, um, what do you guys call them, catch basins? I call them drains, but <laughs> apparently they have a technical term. <laughs> yeah, I'll pass that along to the guys. I you know I would give them a couple of ones that counselors or myself noticed and they already had a big long list and they kind of prioritize them by what's threatening property, go for those ones first, and then work out to the other ones. But Well, I know I mentioned a few when I was out and about walking that I noticed were looking kind of big, but no, you guys did a great job because it's looking really nice out there now. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? Go ahead. Um, in your report, uh, Mr. Harvey says you guys are uh, talking about the tractor replacement. Um, just curious. Well, what kind of tractor are you looking to replace? I believe that's the bi-directional that you're looking to replace. The bi-directional, uh, yeah. From my understanding, they, that tractor or that style is no longer manufactured. So yeah. Are so we looking the, at a different type now? Or? Yeah, it'll be similar horsepower, but it uh, won't be bi-directional, but it'll have a PTO on the front and back. So we'll be able to operate all the attachments. That so, we so maintain do. the capabilities, but it just won't be bi-directional. That's the plan. <coughs> yeah. Okay, thank you. 
right, for the discussion. Okay, all in favor? It's carried. Just for everybody to know, this update to the hockey game, the Stampeders are ahead two to nothing, nearing the midpoint of the first period. <coughs> Okay, we're here. 7.2. Resolve the Protective Service Report for March 2023 be received. Moved by Councillor White, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? Councillor Medwood? I have a question with the 11 garbage complaints. Do we know a cause or a reason? Um, I'm just looking to know whether this is predominantly caused by people who are going through garbages and leaving a mess or it, it's pretty typical this time of year especially the last two weeks because the snow is melting a lot of the garbage <coughs> that did get covered in snow is now exposed so pretty typical for garbage complaints to come up and back when it's this type of year it's not saying that that isn't happening but that can be a, a reason uh, well the biggest reason why I want to know is because is this is potentially going to be a regular ongoing or increasing issue then do we need to look at how we're going to kind of I guess deal with that or rectify that if it's like if it's typical for the season um, great um, if it's kind of something that becomes an, yeah. a trend I know the bylaw officer will be he'll be on it he'll be listing those properties he's pretty busy with a, a dog complaint right now but but yeah, I guess, it'll be, it'll be just to answer that, I guess we monitor that to see that if it's, <coughs> it increases or spikes and doesn't go down, then we need to address it. And I guess the, where I'm going at too is, do we end up putting, I know ultimately it probably ends up being the property owner's responsibility for cleaning up, but at the same time, um, how, how do we handle this so that it's, not an ongoing issue, but like you said, it's something you might have to monitor and through by one by one. Yeah, okay. Because I'm just thinking that's not necessarily solving the root cause of the problem if we're getting after the homeowner who's not actually doing it. So then that's what I'm kind of <coughs> trying to figure out. But maybe something that Mr. Needs. Harvey. Yeah. So when there is a a site that's unsightly so you can start off with fines and then if they're not taking care of it then they can send in the work crew and then bill it uh so like there was one in the past where they weren't there's been a few where it takes them all to clean up or whatever so there is ways to deal with it if it's the same place on a blend kind of thing well that i get and i know our bylaws cover for that but i'm more concerned about if these are actually caused because we do have a a growing sector that is kind of going through garbages. Um, one man's trash is another man's treasure, but they might be leaving a mess in that process. And then if we're penalizing the homeowner, how is that fair to them if they're not the ones intentionally creating that mess? Like I know ultimately they're supposed to go pick it up, but again, that's not solving the root cause of the problem. Um, and that's where my, my concern is if, if that's the cause or reason for why these calls are coming in, then, and if we're not kind of tracking that, then maybe we can start. I guess with the bylaw officer, mainly these things are reactive, so we get there after the mess is made, so we're not. I, if, if the homeowner tells us that it was someone who's rooting through their garbage, we can try and attempt to track that. But that's all I'm asking for because. Again, let's make sure we're getting to the root um, of the problem. Um, the other question I have is the graffiti. Um, I know winter conditions don't allow for proper cleaning or repainting of that, but um, do we have it in our plan to maybe give a courtesy reminder to businesses before we go out sending the formal letter? Um, just a reminder that the weather is hitting that temperature where we can... Uh, yeah, we did that last uh, golden winter when some were very aware that they had some graffiti on their buildings and they were asking for some leniency on that. So yeah. that was provided. Okay. And under animal control, uh, was it our bylaw officer or was it a citizen that surrendered the cats that were impounded? 
they don't take anything from our bylaws here, so it would have to be a citizen. Okay. Um, I need to get back on that one. And the for the dogs, were there any that were actually caught and impounded? It didn't make note of that. I just wanted to clarify. Uh, what was the question, sir? For the the dogs on that report, it doesn't indicate that any were impounded, so none were caught or brought in. It would be reported. <coughs> And the only other one is the overtime parking for Fifth Ave North, Third uh, Street North. I know I brought this up in the past, but um, do we know where on the street and if it was in front of a business, um, can we maybe bring it to a cow or get a resolution going regarding issuing parking passes for businesses? Because I know Fifth Ave North the parking bylaw is in the queue for bylaws to review and the future CAL, but it will happen after the strategic plan, after the two other bylaws that have been requested to be reviewed. So it will, okay. it will be time. If, if you can, just stick to kind of the questions to this uh, resolution. Items that are changing to the bylaw and all that, we'll have an opportunity to do that, like Mr. Poole said. Yeah, no, it's just because I know I brought this up before and my I have the same concern for the a parking tickets issued for Fifth Avenue North, Third Street North is if these are patrons of businesses and it's a service that typically takes more than what that parking window allows, um, instead of continuing to ticket people, uh, it's maybe an indication that we can bring this forward to deal with sooner rather than later. Uh, and the other one I have is what does SRVMAB stand for? an acronym in the report towards the bottom, I think. <laughs> That's the Swan River Valley Mutual Aid District. Oh, thank you. Okay. That was it. Anything further? Okay. All in favor? It's carried. <clears throat> uh, 7.3. Result of the March 2023 Swan River Handy Transit Van Report be received. Moved by Councilor uh, Boychek, seconded by Councilor Bobbing. Discussion? All in favor? Carried. Council reports tonight. We'll start with Councilor Medwood. Oh, well, it's been a while. Uh, I attended the EMO training, which is kind of a crash course, but a good overview, and I believe our upcoming meeting, I think it's maybe next week, uh, we'll get a rundown of what the uh, expectations are for those of us on the, uh, what do you call it, the people that are responsible for taking control when, if we have one of these disasters or emergencies, <laughs> apparently I'm on that committee. What was that? Emergency measures on the road? Yeah, maybe, but I'm apparently on that committee, so it'll be good to go through that little uh, <laughs> training or meeting session to learn more about it. <laughs> uh, Chamber Crime Committee uh, met on March 23rd. Uh, their ideas and concepts uh, have yet to go through the Chamber as board, uh, but they do have some ideas to approach council for some funding and handling some crime matters, so you might see somebody coming for a delegation soon. Uh, attended the special meeting for the retrofit on the arena. We all know how that went. Uh, chamber events committee met. Uh, we started to put our heads together to see what all we need to do for the parade, uh, as well as talk job fair. And I mentioned it to Councillor Powell, but I do need to follow up because um, I think the Friendship Centre used to do a job fair because we'd like to get something lined up for the fall, at least. It's, we're a little bit, um, being a newly established, re-established chamber, we're not in a position to take what spearhead one for the spring. It's a little too uh, quick for us, so we're going to hopefully do something for um, for the fall. Um, I know there's a lot of businesses out there that are 
looking for staff and employees, so hopefully we can help them out. AMMs, um, another excellent opportunity, a lot of great uh, breakout sessions. I attended the one for Manitoba Justice, the Homelessness Plan, uh, Conflict of Interest and Biases, um, the keynote speaker, Devon Clunas, I think, Clunas? Clunas? Yeah. Uh, amazing. Uh, graduated from my alma, alma mater there <coughs> in Winnipeg. And his main message of working together with the community kind of hit home because as elected officials, we're up here to govern. And we bring the best to our community when we are working with services, resources, nonprofit, all the other entities that we have within the community and bringing everybody together so we're working for the same common goal. So with that in mind, I am even more invigorated to really resurrect those uh, Swan Valley Business Consortium meetings that took place every couple months for a while there. It was a great way to come together as a village, that one-stop shop. Every You could learn what everybody else was doing and have that excellent overview and uh, I think it's even more valuable now that I'm sitting in a counselor's chair to be able to kind of take part in one of those and just kind of again that one-stop shop to know what everyone's doing and what's how it's the networking that came from those opportunities too was tremendous. Uh, COPP I trained two new members uh, after I returned from AMM so I literally got out of the vehicle and ran my butt right over to the training session so we have two new members joining our crew. Um, I meant to write down my March stats for you and I completely forgot. But uh, what I can tell you is we didn't have quite as many patrols <coughs> in March. However, we did have uh, quite a few members going out to uh, co-op Extra Foods and Red Apple. At least five times they were out with tables up to do some PR and some recruiting. And we did have two members that have been doing, uh, hitting all the businesses on Main Street, Fifth Avenue, in the downtown area, and basically uh, promoting the COPP program, asking them to put our posters up in the windows uh, to help us with recruiting, and so it's kind of out there for everybody. So, and we have recently had two businesses. Um, they have contributed to support us with gas cards in the past, so Cook and Cook Insurance and Swan Valley Co-op have both uh, provided some more gas cards to help support our members. So thank you very much to both those businesses. And um, yeah, busy week, our man, chamber, town hall, and a couple other meetings just got added to my calendar this week, so. <laughs> That's all I have. <coughs> Councilor White. <clears throat> uh, the EMO meeting we attended on the 22nd with Matt Lin Linick and the EMO people, and if there's a bottom line, I don't think we're doing a good job of that. There's all sorts of legitimate reasons for that. We have to prepare before the emergency, and now that Mr. Linick is here, I'm cautiously optimistic, optimistic we'll be having a tabletop exercise where we can look at it possibly like power down, flooding. I, I, I appreciate we didn't have that officer, but if there was a priority in my mind right now, it'd be doing a tabletop operation with our little, our community right here, how do we prepare? I, I, we cannot be putting this up much longer. Uh, the Urban Forest Committee uh, has been meeting regularly and their meeting is tomorrow night right here at seven o'clock. They want to, it's interested in them getting involved in that. That'd be important. Uh, I just came from a small Valley sport fish meeting and I can tell you they spend roughly $200,000 a year on tourism development, a byproduct of putting those fish and do working that fish, and they, I see a request for some support on that. I ask you to consider <coughs> uh, our musky fishery just south of us will bring people from all over the world. There's no doubt about that. It's only one in Manitoba, but there are musky. Uh, we had the special meeting regarding the arena, and I think uh, I think uh, Tanya and Tracy and their team for bringing that to our attention. And I compliment. I uh, understand you guys have organized a committee with gung ho of raising a large amount of money. I want to compliment uh, Mr. Harvey uh, for a meeting with a constituent at the cemetery recently and that's a, that's a pretty uh, volatile place to meet people. Their emotions run high and uh, 
Uh, Darren, you, you handled it very well. I accepted our apologies and uh, hopefully that we could try to figure out that. It's really difficult when there's four feet of snow out there, by the way, finding your way around and not uh, doing some damage, but Darren, you handled it really well. I met with the owners of Cal Tire and they're running their fifth uh, fundraiser. In the last four or five, they've grossed way over $100,000. They want to give $20,000 to the CT scan. And if that's all paid for and moving forward, I'm sure they'll give us the latitude to do what we want with that, within reason, something in the health world. So I would ask uh, our team to significantly to think about their request because it costs us nothing. In the past, the Bozeman Lions got that money. This year, uh, 80000 will go to the, uh, the, the golf course and 20000 to the CT scan. And they'd appreciate if some counselors would like to cook at the barbecue, which is on June the 24th. And uh, that's a busy time, so if you have time on the 24th, that would be great. And uh, last night, I don't know what, I recently met with Swan Valley Outdoors, and they've probably dropped, we have the community, way over 100,000 the last couple of years, dollars in our community. And they have a, a program where if the town, the town of Swan River has a program that has something to do with outdoors, outdoors activity. We have, we have $50,000 two nights ago, and it wasn't all requested. And uh, it probably would have gone if we had it. So if you, uh, Mr. Pooley or a team think there's something that's outdoor kind of thing, uh, I'm sure they would look at it. 100,000 plus to date. And uh, what else did I have? Oh, I know, we're talking about uh, lifeguards in the pool. And it appears that with some of our new industries developing, which are all in favor of that we're losing some of our lifeguards. We're going to some of the other places who may pay a little more than a lifeguard. So I would ask, if that's true, I would ask us to consider the funding for lifeguard, maybe we've got to pay them a little more, which will help fill up the pool. I don't have no clue what the media, I know years ago we raised it and it helped a little bit. And one other thing, I was reading the rec director's uh, job application, and, I, and I, I sort of believe it should be two jobs, a uh, program manager, a program organizer of some sort, and a facilities manager, because the pool, for example, we put the wrong chemical in, you burn out the liner, it's $100,000 down the tube or more. So perhaps it should be a facilities manager slash recreational, and it's not my job to tell you guys how to do, but I sometimes think we can do a, we can always do better, but having a, a person who specializes in pools and breaks and ice can, it will have a different skill set than a person organizing volleyball tournaments, and they're both important. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Councilor Powell. Okay, thank you. Um, so we attended the rise meeting with uh, Mayor Jacobson on March 29th, um, and it was a big group of people from uh, all around. Um, we attended that, and we'll be taking it in the trade show on March 6th in Thompson. Um, we attended two in-person meetings and three Zoom meetings with the library and board in the last little while. Um, met in, well, through the AMM, we uh, met and attended Community plan and development training opportunities that are coming available for the municipality, um, different proposal development funds, um, new social housing rent supplements, and capital funding proposals, uh, also community safety and well being. Uh, we listen to collaborative homelessness strategies for Manitoba that are coming, that are going to be coming available in the next fall. Um, and we also stopped in Minnedosa and, and took a tour of their rink and just wanted to say thank you to Cassandra Groen and Devin for the tour. That's it. Thank you. <coughs> Councilor Bob. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just a little bit of a, a comment on a issue that I brought forward to the staff here on 5th Avenue South about some dwellings that were put up against the building. I just don't know if that was looked after or where that would be right now. We did inspect it, and I like we found a chair, but we didn't find any anybody dwelling in like next to the house. Well, it was just a, a couple COPP members are telling me that they're traveling <coughs> in there, so I just they were worried that this may be a fire issue in the future. It's it's definitely high traffic, but we didn't find like any living quarters next to the house. So is it <coughs> safe to say that that's going to be left the way it is right now? <coughs> uh, yeah, all I see is a deck that's covered. There's a big old chair down below. I don't know what it's <coughs> Chief for our chat. Sorry, just to update everybody, uh, CEO Pool, I realize you're away. Uh, we had uh, our bylaw officer attend again. Um, 
He managed to track down who the owner of the property is and is working with the owner of the property to get that back area cleared up. We just don't have a timeline yet. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, this uh, Thursday I have a watershed meeting. Uh, just to let you know that we've had, this time of the year, watershed invites their sub-district members all to every meeting, so they will, they'll be non-voting, but we're, it'll be Upper Swan Lobster Creek. This, so every sub-district gets a turn at the table to bring their views and points. So one of those things. In the future, I can't say exactly one day that I do believe is in June we'll be hosting a water festival or all the school children come up to the interpreter center on the Dark Mountains there and we have a water festival explaining erosion and all sorts of things. It's, it, yeah, it's <coughs> something to see, it's actually well worth it. Uh, just an explanation on the last meeting we were there, or what we had, we had a, a resolution was voted down not to go ahead with the repairs on the arena. So just to explain where in the tender process that puts us right now, CAO Pool can explain that, just for the council and for the public. Uh, basically the status of the project is, is just suspended. So the, 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 the prices that we received on that tender process will be null and void. So we, we can't go back anymore, we will have to redo a tender process if that's what council decides. Okay, and to, but I'm under the impression that all the specification and tender forms are, are now our property. Yes, we purchased them they are. Okay, so that if we went to tender again, we have all that documentation. Yes, if, if we if there is a building code update, we would have to spend money to update to code uh, between now and whenever if you decide to retender. <coughs> okay. Uh, just uh, food for thought oh, with upcoming budget stuff. Has there been any thought of putting some thought into a caretaker for the cemetery? Is that part of the budget plan this year? And is that something that council would wish to move forward on? Uh, well, yeah, Mr. Harvey, but I, again, that's something that we have spoken about in a, in a cow meeting, but I guess if you want to respond to it. Yeah, we have a not a senior employee, but an employee who is interested in that. He's currently working, so he is working at the cemetery, but when he retires, he'd be interested. Okay, in that. Well, thank you. Uh, that's about it. Thank you. Okay. Councillor uh, Boychuk. Okay, so uh, I attended the EMO training. I'm not going to go into it uh, too much. Uh, very interesting. Management of Justice meeting as well. Special arena meeting and um, <coughs> um, at the spring AMM also attended the uh, Mantua Justice breakout, the housing one, conflict of interest, and the special speaker was very good. Um, we have a or had on April 6th the Swan Valley Legacy Committee meeting where they were getting more organized after the town's decision from our special meeting. Uh, so I know that a delegation should be coming forward in the next little bit to make a presentation to council and ask for your attendance at one of their upcoming meetings. Um, tomorrow with Armed, can't make it during the day, going to the networking from 5 to 7 and then I believe uh, meeting with uh, Sharon afterwards at 7 o'clock regarding some um, immigration um, options that other communities are doing so I don't know who else I think you're on immigration services but you have another meeting so I can go you can go whoever else can make it it'll just be right after that at seven o'clock also uh, attended the Minidosa arena tour and very grateful for their uh, taking us in and giving us a look around it definitely helped to visualize things and get some ideas um, also wanting to set up a meeting, I had uh, been in contact with Ian Fluids, um, Maj El Samrut. I believe that was something that they've started here, Darren, with the water. So they were wanting to meet with us Thursday or Friday if there's any time that worked. Um, that's Bob, Boychuk, Bobic, and Medwood is on that council. So if anything works, we can have a Zoom meeting with them. That's this Friday? Uh, yeah. Okay. Or they work around it, whatever. Because <coughs> my 14th is definitely more open than my 13th, that's for sure. Mm -hmm. 
So I don't know if there's anything. Maybe just email me. I'll send out an email after the meeting and we can hammer out a date. Um, currently uh, working with the Arts, Culture, and Sport and Community Fund grant application. Um, Mr. Harvey has sent me the KML file we need for that and uh, working on some other support and stuff. Um, he's going to get me the proof of ownership as well, I believe, or was that you, Darren? One of you. Um, there also was an environmental specialist I forwarded to Darren, Doug Dolby. Um, he uh, was interested in assisting us or helping us with our uh, waste project if we need be, so I forwarded that to Mr. Harvey to contact. Did you contact him or not yet? Uh, not yet, but that will be part of an RFP. Yeah, yeah. Um, then also just to touch on the lifeguard issue that uh, Councillor White spoke about, I'm wondering if we can press some change to the safety regulations for rural communities because we are just in a situation where we can't, uh, we just don't have access to them like Winnipeg and even Winnipeg I believe is struggling with that as well. I believe they spoke of it at the AMM but I'm just wondering if there's something that we can possibly do to maybe change those regulations because maybe they're not um, realistic for uh, rural communities in order to provide those services to our ratepayers. Uh, I believe that is it. Okay, thank you. Deputy Mayor Morial. <clears throat> well, it's been an interesting couple of weeks, uh, along with other member of council. Uh, on the 22nd was the EMO training session uh, with Matt Lenick and EMO representative. Uh, 28th was the special meeting regarding the arena. The 29th, uh, Councillor Boychuk and his worship Jacobson and myself met with uh, Minister Gertzen and his staff. Um, so hopefully uh, our discussion um, was very fruitful and looking forward to a potential announcement uh, from the Minister's office as a result of that meeting. Um, then last week, with the rest of Council, the AMM Spring Conference in Winnipeg, um, where there was the leaders forum, it was a very good uh, initial debate between uh, the ministers or first ministers um, to kick off uh, the election cycle for the next uh, upcoming election. Um, some breakout sessions, trade shows. Uh, we also had uh, opportunity and some very significant uh, and productive uh, discussions uh, with representatives and administration from the city of Thompson. Um, that uh, our administration will be following up with them uh, in regards to um, some issues that they've had that we can help out with and benefit our community. Or uh, Also discuss rep with uh, representatives from Winnipeg, Morden, uh, various AMM directors, and I had uh, a lengthy discussion uh, and meeting with uh, Ryan Shank, uh, the fire commissioner, um, in regards to our uh, agreement or MOU regarding uh, the fire board um, creation with the municipality of Swan Valley West. Um, so he's offered to help out with that as I continue to uh, uh, assist with drafting that. And then once I complete that in the next uh, day or so, I will forward that on to uh, the rest of the committee and Swan Valley West counterparts uh, for review. And uh, also he's offered again uh, to provide assistance with us if we're continuing to have uh, challenges with uh, creating or getting an agreement on the uh, mutual aid agreements. And he's willing to come back up and speak to all councils. Uh, um, as I mentioned before, next week, um, PMH uh, Board of Directors is once again uh, gonna start handing or holding their board meetings in various communities throughout the region. Um, so next week, uh, they'll be up in Swan River, and then the following day, they will be having a stakeholders meeting where uh, stakeholder representatives, um, and I encourage um, us to uh, poke and prod our <coughs> neighboring municipalities to send representatives um, to that meeting uh, where they can ask questions and hear information. Uh, Traditionally, it's just been uh, representatives from the town of Swan River that's been attending uh, those meetings. So, um, and that's on the 20th. So, 
and then next week, the next two weeks, it's going to be very busy, just like everybody else with upcoming meetings and training sessions. That's all I have. Okay. Yeah. Can I ask a question? Sure. In light of what uh, Deputy Mayor Moria just shared with us in encouraging our neighboring municipalities, is it possible for us to send a communication to them? They have an communication email, already. Or have we already sent one out? Well, okay. They, they have their own invite too, but I have already reached out to the other municipalities to come to the, uh, to the meeting. <coughs> but uh, they get their own invite from um, <coughs> Pretty Health. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> For me, okay, uh, yes, it seems like this is uh, a long period of time here. So basically my period of time here in the last few weeks started off with the uh, lobby days uh, being a um, member of, of the uh, AMM. And as you've uh, seen previously, the four points that we are lobbying uh, government and the opposition heading into election 2023. We talked about uh, funding fairness and predictability. That's on our uh, funding formulas for the municipalities. And I think that uh, the province did listen to us, but there's a lot more, as it was mentioned. Uh, a predictable funding model is what we're looking for. It's also we're uh, pushing on uh, rebating of the PST. Uh, to the municipalities, uh, similar to what we get with the GST rebate is. Uh, and actually one of our breakaway sessions that the mayors and reeves uh, and CEOs had during the convention and was brought up that maybe they should consider even the carbon tax. So there's going to be a few other pieces that might be lobbied at some point in time, but PST and, and the funding formula. And then of course investing in core infrastructure and uh, you know looking at funding water and wastewater infrastructure and so forth and it's 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 a big it's a big piece there and every municipality has some of these issues um, for you know and also with economic growth public safety and education and so forth um, and they did talk a little bit about bill 37 it was interesting in our breakout session because um, the morning session was primarily just the southern municipalities and in the afternoon it was the northern municipalities and or the I guess I'd say northern, but a little bit further north. And the morning, uh, they really did not like Bill Thirty Seven. And uh, in the afternoon, they didn't really know what Bill Thirty Seven was. So it's interesting, and uh, I think that we will, you know, take a part of uh, hoping the provincial government would reconsider Bill Thirty Seven. Um, investing people, the government needs to work on recruiting and retaining healthcare professionals. We've been doing here locally for how long, right? And so this is a big piece and, and uh, um, the, the AMM will lobby quite heavily uh, during the, the next uh, you know, three quarters of the year, I guess. And then public safety. And again, we talk a lot about that. You know, we talk about healthcare, public safety, and uh, the, uh, you know, our policing, uh, if it's bail reform or whatever it might be and keeping our citizens safe and funding of, you know, say policing to combat raising rates of crime and, and drug trafficking. So there's a whole big piece. So I thought that um, the, all the takeaways that we had, uh, you know, visiting all the municipalities and um, putting this uh, lobby piece together was really good. And, and I thought, you know, I shared it with all of you, had a chance to have a look at it, and I thought they're pretty effective. Uh, four pillars and in our breakout sessions all pretty much agreed um, My first AMM as a, as a director was kind of different, but still was close by with you all and uh, I had my first chance to have a breakout session that I was able to uh, Host myself and that was on the homeless strategy a few of you did attend that and um, I think that Councilor Powell asked some good questions, but uh, um, definitely they're working on um, some some strategies and, and definitely pointed out that Thompson and Swan River you know are you know two uh, municipal regions I guess are uh, you know on the forefront with that with a few others of, of course but um, they're still kind of in the, in the inner workings of that but we will hopefully start to see some progress with that here in the next uh, few months I also broke broke away to the 
ombudsman, and I thought that it was pretty interesting. Uh, uh, the people that have the right to ask questions, and if it's FIPA requests and all that, and the process, because I didn't quite understand how that worked, but it's it's quite interesting, and uh, and and there's protections of uh, the individual that is actually asking for the information and so forth. But the biggest thing is is for the municipality or governments to be as transparent as possible. Provide as much information, if it's on our website or whatever, for people to find it. If they can't find it, and they're doing a FIPA request, <clears throat> help them to find the information because really we, we don't have anything to hide. And then, uh, of course, it was mentioned earlier that we had a chance to meet with uh, the Minister of Justice, Kelvin Gertson, uh, a couple weeks ago. <clears throat> and I thought that some of the um, items that we talked about, that we seem to always be talking about, hinging on the revolving door or, or bail reform, and they talked about how um, from Ottawa right now, the provincial government's got some commitment on, uh, uh, say, uh, judges that have to uh, consider the impact of the victims, but the other big one is considering the impact to the community. And the, and the federal government has said that they committed, but the administration <coughs> has not. So these are things that um, we as a community, we will be lobbying for, and, uh, and we'll be bringing forth even um, Thursday night when uh, Mr. Mazur is in town, because I think that this is some of the steps uh, forward. And then we talked about several other things, and uh, as well as CSO, and I think that Deputy Mayor Morial has been working a little bit on that. But uh, some legislation has is changing. Uh, the minister didn't mention that the CSO, uh, what well, has affecting the CSO is not going to happen until probably sometime in June when the legislation is passed. But he did say to us that we really should look into that because of just you know the different types of layering, uh, police, <clears throat> so much more. But you guys all kind of talked about it too, so I. I don't want to bore you with all my uh, repeated stuff, but uh, again, thanks to who all was able to attend the AMM, and uh, you represented your community in, in a very professional manner. Uh, the networking is very positive. I know a lot of people say, like, what do you do with the AMM? But <clears throat> the, you know, sure, the, the trade show is important. I know that a few of you got some insight on some things that were very important and, and, uh, and learned from, but also, um, you know, the breakout sessions I'll get a chance to, to learn from because, you know, that's what they're there for. And I think they do a good job of uh, providing that to us. But also, like, the networking. I think the networking is one of the biggest things that we've grown. I've, I've seen this just in, you know, the last number of years. But, you know, the communities that we have grown, you know, and, and networked really well. The Thompson is an example and more than Winkler. And, uh, and, and just getting to know more of our... Uh, AMM directors and, and the executive. So I think we I think we're doing a good job. So I thank you. You should all give yourself a pat on the back for that as well. So so with that, we'll move on to the CAMS report. I do have a, a brief report and rating. If take any questions on <clears throat> what's coming up. Uh, I am working on the strategic planning workbook that will happen on April twenty fifth. Committee the whole meeting. Uh, the property standards bylaw is drafted, just going through some final reviews, so expect that by email to be uh, on an upcoming Cal meeting. Uh, the rec director ad advertisement will be up on the 14th, so I'll be contacting the recreation committee to schedule some interviews if they are available. Uh, and just on the AMM, I won't repeat what's already been said, but just a uh, thought for council how much we talk about networking and how AMM is the town's voice to the province. It goes the same for the FCM. The FCM is the municipal voice to the federal government. So we, we should think about sending, uh, maybe not all of council, but a few reps every year to the FCM uh, conference to, to make sure that we are at that table, they hear what's happening in Swan River. <coughs> Food for thought. That's it? Yeah. Okay, perfect, thank you. All right, moving on, 8, 8.1. Resolve the town of Swan River donate the use of tables and chairs to the Swan Valley Sport Fishing Enhancement Incorporated for the May 6, 2023 Annual Fish Supper and Fundraiser. Moved by 
Councillor White, second by Councillor Boycha. Discussion? Councillor Medwood and then Councillor White. My only question is, <coughs> uh, it doesn't indicate how many tables and chairs, so just to clarify that with this resolution, we're okay with any number of tables and chairs that they are in need of? It is $11 per, just so council you knows. Know, you're asking how many, right? Yeah, I'm just saying it doesn't indicate. So with this resolution, we're basically saying whatever they tell us they need, we're okay with providing for them. Okay, just, you're good then? Yeah. I think Councilor White might have an answer to that, so go ahead. It's 450 uh, chairs, 70 tables, and uh, obviously we could rent them and get paid for that, but I, I, I know that when they spend $200,000 plus a year, in our community and bring tourism and economic develop, development to our community. There's no money out of our budget, just less money coming in, and more money coming in from that which they do to promote the community. And I believe that they provide the labor for moving it to, do they not? I believe so, they have to go pick them up and set them up. Yeah. They or we? They. Yes, okay. Go ahead, uh, Councillor Baller. So, uh, I understand that the idea behind this, I, I appreciate everything that they do for the community. Is there any other neighboring municipalities that contribute to this fish supper? To do what? Any neighboring municipalities that also contributed to this supper? Nothing specific other than attending the dinner itself, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Further discussion? Good idea, though. Further discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Thank you. Result the town of Swanover donate the use of tables and chairs to Cal Tire for the June 16, 2023 annual fundraising barbecue <coughs> event. Moved by Councillor White, second by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. Go ahead. Well, the goal is to give $20,000 back into our community but that goes to the CT scan or some other health department that's fantastic. And I'm sure they've raised in excess of a half a million dollars towards the golf course, the Bulls and Lions Medical. These men and women put, put the money back in. So again, it's not, we're not giving them money, we're not charging them money. So I think it's a, and they want some of us to work for free. <laughs> so you're welcome to come out and work that day. So I think it's a fantastic project. Further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just for, I guess it's related to this, but I know CFO Canada is probably turning in his potential grave here that uh, with this, um, well, with these grants that we're asking out, I think in our next uh, budget deliberations that we actually create a line and actually assign a value to that so that we know where we're at and we're sitting at it. And then Mr. Canada knows, and then we can judge accordingly where we're at throughout the year when these requests comes in. So I have no issues with these. Uh, but I think we just need to have them more properly accounted for uh, for it in our budget. So. Go ahead. I think there was a report where he does, they do lay out how much uh, we do donate for the tables. I, I'm sure I've seen it, but yeah, yeah it, it wouldn't be a bad idea to have a number and we can, you have it, right? Yeah, I know I've it, seen it. Yeah. But it's, um, it's not a specific line in the budget as it expects. No, we don't. We just have a report on what we've given out in the past. Okay, further discussion? Um, this kind of goes to this, but I don't see it on here, and it was dated April 4th, that National Red Dress uh, correspondence from Charles Otter. Yeah, the letter was opened this morning, so it's on next Tuesday's council meeting. Next Tuesday. Just so you know, um, they're just looking for approval to host the event. Yeah. Okay. So that's all they're looking yeah, for. Yeah, the resolution is Perfect. Yeah. Right? yeah. I think, uh, uh, Mr. Poole, you have the numbers for, this, for the uh, Cal Tire. It was minimal. Uh, they do have it in here, 25 tables, 150 chairs. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion? By doing this, we're not taking away business. I'm thinking the museum or any other place that rents tables out. It might be. Okay. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.3. Resolve that Mayor Lance Jacobson and CAO 
Derek Poole be authorized to sign the collective bargaining agreement with QP Local 851. Moved by <coughs> Councillor Bodick, seconded by Councillor White. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. 8.4. <coughs> Can't even talk here. The, uh, the Government of Canada has made the decision in Budget 2023 to make municipalities responsible for all retroactive costs stemming from the latest RCMP collective bargaining agreement and whereas these extraordinary one-time costs, which in some jurisdictions amount to millions of dollars, will cause significant hardship for communities and residents across the country and, and were negotiated without meaningful consultation or a seat at the table for the municipalities responsible for paying the bill. And whereas municipal governments are already paying a growing share of policing costs, but unlike other uh, orders of government, cannot run deficits <coughs> to spread out the impact of these extraordinary one-time sums and have limited revenue tools. And whereas local governments will now be forced to make difficult decisions that will impact residents, such as cutting essential services, reducing policing levels, raising property taxes significantly, and or canceling work on local infrastructure at a time when Canadians' concerns about community, safety, and cost of living are already rising. And whereas going forward, it is critical that municipalities be proactively engaged in any forthcoming processes related to contract policing to prevent this occurring again, therefore be be it resolved that the town of Swan River join the Federation of Canadian Municipalities in calling on the federal government to commit to ensuring that local governments are meaningful, consulted, fully informed, and at the table on issues related to policing costs, giving the municipal role in keeping our communities safe, and be it further resolved that the town of Swan River convey this support in writing to local members of the government. <coughs> Move by. Councilor Boychuk, seconded by Councilor Dippermayor, Morial. Discussion. Go ahead. <clears throat> um, I guess it's no shock in my views on this, but uh, I will give Council and the rest of our ratepayers warning that this is not the end. Uh, we are also in deliberations uh, with uh, AMM and FCM for the federal government to absorb the cost of the body worn cameras um, that is being. Uh, ruled out throughout Canada, um, where the federal government has picked up the initial capital cost, but the ongoing costs uh, regarded to the download, storage, and administration of all the data, which is an annual ongoing cost, um, will be born and downloaded once again to the municipalities without our consultation. So as it, the resolution states, further um, downloading, which we know that they're already um, doing, uh, we need to support this and make our views known not only to our local member of parliament but to any uh, representative and we'll let people know where we sit on this. Okay. For the discussion, all in favor? It's carried. 8.5. Resolved that the press release regarding the RCMP retroactive salary costs be approved and released. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Medwood. Discussion? All in favor? It's carried. Uh, sorry, I'll just to back it up one. I just realized there was actually a posting for the uh, um, public release, but I'm sure it's all good and I'll read it later. Okay. It wasn't, uh, it was it wasn't generic. I was going to say, it wasn't there before, and my question was going to be, is our press release going to be the reading of the resolution? <laughs> but I just noticed now that something's been added. <laughs> it's like, oh, we actually have a press release to read. But uh, I'm sure if it's in line with the uh, resolution, we're it all is. good. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's almost like the I'm, same thing. I'm on board with fighting the fight, so. Very good. Whereas a group of, oh, sorry. Uh, I didn't do that right. Uh, 8.6, whereas a group of community individuals have committed to pursue the option of a new community facility focusing on arena services, and whereas this commit, committed community group has formally organized in what we shall be known as the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, 
And whereas the Swan Valley Legacy Committee intends to select a site on town property which requires authorization from the town of Swan River in order to achieve provincial fund, uh, program funding. Therefore, be it resolved that the Swan Valley Legacy Committee, which is a tenant for the purpose of building a new community facility focusing on arena services on the town of Swan River property located 1424 1st Street North and 221 9th Avenue North, of which we attest that we expect the organization to continue as a tenant for this purpose for a period of at least five years from the expected completion date of the project initiated is making application to Manitoba Sport, Culture and Heritage for a grant under the Arts and Culture, Sport and Community Program for an amount of upward of? Five million. Five million <clears throat> for the purpose of building a new community facility focusing on arena services. And be, and be it further resolved that we, the Town of Swanover, hereby concur with and give consent to the work proposal contained in application. We recognize the full financial implications from the development of the project and acknowledge that the provincial government will not be responsible for any further financial assistance other than the grant applied for. Moved by Councillor Medwood, seconded by Councillor Boychuk. Discussion. Uh, Deputy Mayor Morio. Um, I am not understanding why we would uh, put in the last sentence that uh, um, we acknowledge that the provincial government will not be responsible for any further financial assistance other than the grant applied for. Why would we close the door if we can compound grants from somewhere? To me, we should strike. I have no issue with anything, but we should um, strike that and leave it the door open. If that's the only one we get, great, but we shouldn't close the door in being able to compound grants from the province, from other departments or uh, sections. Okay. Um, are you making a... Uh, First, I want to know if there's a reason for that. And if yeah, there, there is. <clears throat> so, owner's authorization for resolution approved. This is right from the grant, and that's the wording in there. So, I mean... I think we could clarify that <clears throat> what is meant in this sentence is that the uh, arts, culture, and sport community program will not commit more than $5 million to this. If, if the provincial government has a... An additional as a rec facilities fund coming, that's a completely separate program. Therefore, this, like if, it, if it's a regional project and there's grants available through uh, Indigenous, uh, the, the Indigenous Department or somewhere else. I think maybe okay. if, if we wanted to reword it, we could remove the provincial government and no. in acknowledge that the uh, arts, culture, and that's sports. Exactly. Yeah, I was program. thinking. Well, mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's, that's a so, so does that what the mover and seconder agree to that then? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm yeah. good with that. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to get it in here. I guess we have to vote on that. the amended. Do we continue discussion before we vote on the amended, or uh, do we continue we'll, we'll discussion? We'll deal with after? the amended first, and okay. then we can go back to discussion. I just want to clarify because I have. <laughs> well, you'll get your chance to speak. We haven't voted yet. I just want to, I don't want to make sure I'm not going to lose that opportunity. <laughs> if you refresh. So we had a resolution to uh, to amend the arts, culture, and sport in, uh, in that line. We do not need a resolution to amend a resolution. We just need the mover and seconder to agree to the amendment. Okay, amend. so we did that. Okay, so then um, further discussion. Well, I would just like to say 
awesome. Thank you to this committee. I love the fact that it's including not only the community, but also the user groups and getting all that valuable input and some fundraising so it takes the burden off of the taxpayers per se and the potential of increasing taxes so I am very happy to see this come together and that they're working hard to get what they want in the community. Okay. Further discussion? Council Robert. This probably might be the right time to ask this question but what at what point when we move forward with this would the town fund ever need to make the commitment on how much money the taxpayers will be putting in? It's probably too, yeah, I'm not quite there yet. But that we, will we're, that's be an issue that will come in the near future. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that's good. Clarification. For the, go ahead. And there also is a request to meet with um, the town um, to draft a memorandum of understanding between the town and this group so that it's all laid out clear as much okay. at the start. So we're not going to have any issues down the road. Very so good. that's in the works, okay. and we're setting up the date Thank for you. that. Yeah. Okay. Further discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Okay. Here we are. Eight point seven. Be it resolved the town of Swan River Advance funds the amount of $20,000 to the Swan Valley Library Board. I guess it should be the Northwest uh, Library, uh, Northwest Regional Library Board. Uh, be it further resolved that the funds be paid in two separate payments of $10,000 for the current and next payroll expenditures. Moved by Councillor Powell, seconded by Councillor Bobbick. Discussion? Councillor Bobbick. Oh, can you explain why there's an advancement of funding in, in their budget? Is this advance coming off next year's budget or how, what, what's happening here? It'll be part of their next year's budget. Oh, so we're advancing from a next year's budget? 2023. Okay. For the discussion, go ahead. This, the only other thing is the insurance, the insurance for that. Insurance. The, pay, the payment for insurance is seventeen thousand dollars. Anything to discuss on that? Um, you mean they're they're requiring that? Yeah. Oh, I thought it was just the payroll. So there's a three thousand dollar insurance invoice that they're dealing with. There's a, well, no, there's like the seventeen thousand dollars that they said that they paid already. Is there, right. Oh, but you're talking about on the um, uh, the uh, water damage. Water damage. Water damage. Water damage. Oh, yeah, yeah, that that would be separate. They're inquiring, <laughs> and we're inquiring as well to see okay. when that's coming because it, okay. it's been a long time. Yeah. Okay. Good. Okay. For the discussion. All in favor? It's carried. Okay. 10.10, 10, 10.1. 10. Oh, something's a little goofy there. <coughs> Result that counts as follows be hereby approved for payment. General accounts checks number 30080 to number 30154, totaling $139,314.73 as listed on Schedule A. Checks number 3099 was voted due to incorrect payee, replaced by checks number 30117. Check number 30105 voided due to uh, request for grant has been rescinded. Uh, payroll counts checks number 5292 to 5297, totaling $10,051.48 listed on Schedule B. Payroll accounts checks number 5298 to number 5305 totaling $103,119.12 as listed on Schedule C. Direct deposits payments totaling $755 as scheduled, listed on Schedule D. And direct deposits payments totaling $17,615.07 as listed on Schedule E. Moved by. Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Powell. Discussion, Councilor Medwood. 
I have a few. <laughs> um, starting with the uh, explanation uh, sheet. 30092, the Royal Mechanical Solutions, uh, $3,281.60 for the pool. Vectron HVAC maintenance and repair. Is this something that's done quarterly, annually? Uh, I know it's done at least annually. Okay. Um, I don't know what the exact issue is and what the repair was. I'd have to look into that and get back to you if you need it. But it well, it's with it saying maintenance and repair, I'm assuming it was a maintenance, and, and that's why I'm wondering is this something that's done? quarterly or annually, but I'm assuming it was a maintenance checkup, which potentially resulted in some repairs as well. We, we have an annual uh, maintenance program that gets, <coughs> happens at the end of September every year. So this being in the spring, I'm assuming something went wrong and needed to be repaired. Okay. <clears throat> but I can have to go back to be sure. Maybe do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, 30093 uh, Spruce Tent and Tree Computers for Live Barn Installation, um, 2535.68. Now, my understanding is the installation was temporary to have it up and operational for provincials. Are we potentially looking at the same price tag when we get it fixed to its. I I know the, the big portion of this, and I, I don't know the exact break, is the backup battery is expensive, but the live barn installation, uh, the local company had to spend over three times the amount of time that was told to them that they would have to spend. So a live barn, I'm assuming, refused to pay them, and uh, the invoices come to the town. So we have to go after live barn for that. Okay, because my next question was going to be, did we account for this in the budget? And if so, where does it fit? Mm. Go ahead. Live Barn, the installation was supposed to be free, but because they didn't send someone up, they hired a third party, which being Spruce Products, to do this. So I think we have pretty much every right to go at Live Barn and say, whoa, that's not the contract that was signed. You were to install it, no charge. There was not supposed to be any cost to this, so okay. we need to look into it further. I don't think have, we have. We're not paying that, are we? I believe it's paid. It's, yeah. it's paid. That's what this is saying. Yeah. So, how do we do this? How do they pay before we vote on this? That's it. Kind of seems backwards. We're the carts before the horse here. Because then if there's any issues, then how do we stop that? Our procurement policy does allow for a certain leeway on certain uh, position yeah. levels yes. to be able to put stuff just, through. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna start. And just for interest <laughs> charges, so it, to get it done in a timely fashion, because by the time it gets on a council meeting, like by the time they mail it out, we receive it, gets processed, and then if it has to wait two weeks for a council meeting, because it had just passed a council meeting, so it's just, so if we're doing it, we weren't paying them until it was passed at a council meeting, we'd probably start including interest charges, because it would go past the 30 days, potentially. But now it's going to be hard to argue with Live Farm to say, you should be uh, the one paying that, that was a contract, they've already got their money, too bad, so sad. So yeah. that's, I guess we shouldn't be putting in bills for payment processing when we know there is an issue with it, I guess. I, 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 think, I, think the, I think the rec director at the time had some sympathy for the local company right. because Live Barn was outright refusing any payment and they were spending triple to quadruple amount of time there and they wanted to get up and running. They knew that the town was wanting mm -hmm. this. And they, they made their deadline, they did it before that Friday, but they did incur a massive expense and my farm just outright said, go buy a carpet tree, we're not paying. See so a I believe the rec director approved that okay. with sympathy to the local company. Go ahead. Uh, just looking at the invoice, uh, $565 for a four port, firewall, micro appliance, mini PC. So that's a piece of equipment. 
and then uh, labor four hundred and forty dollars that includes creating separate VLANs for Stamps Town Fast Hockey and Live Barn, and then two hundred and forty dollars labor installation of new arena router for Live Barn purposes. Right. So the, the town did agree to to buy the new router. Uh, we increased the dollar, not the dollar no, that no. it is. You had a donation from Mr. Paul oh, right. and Nicolition for in the amount of six hundred dollars for the router. We knew that was going to be an additional expense. Yeah. And then the dollar an hour increase to the rental was for the monthly internet charges that we would be incurring. It had right. nothing to do with installation because that was supposed to be covered by Live Barn. I do remember Brendan stating that there had to be a a makeshift installation due to something and extra materials needed to be purchased in order to get it up by that Friday. It wouldn't be the final installation, but they needed to purchase materials in order to get it working. I, I do recall that conversation. Okay, for the discussion, <clears throat> Councilor Bobbitt. I guess just echoing, in the future, if there's any, like we're paying a bill for another person, actually. We're the third party here. Yeah, I, 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 I again, I'm, I don't know the details. I, yeah. I just don't. Uh, I'm, so I'm not questioning. I'm just back to you, saying in the future that if there's issues like this, should be brought forward for council to make the decision before it's made. I guess is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. I don't know how you screen that out. Well, the, the push was to get it up by Friday, and Brendan just said yes, get it up by Friday. So he could have said no and not spent the extra materials, we would not have had Live Barn for that weekend. But the question is that Live Barn was supposed to pay the contractor, not us. Yeah. It's not what the extra materials were. That was something, if there was extra material, that would be something that the contractor would deal with Live Barn. I think it got to a point where the contractor reached its its point to where Live Barn said, this is how much work it's going to take. Oh, okay. And Live Barn said, well, we don't want we're not going any further. If you want to, it's on you. And but I, I, I just didn't. at the same time, and I'm not going back that the council needs it. Okay, this is the reason why it didn't get done because this had to be settled before the thing. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. We, we would be, because we only meet every two weeks, that would be our fault that it wasn't up and running because we would have to make that decision. That's right. Yeah. Okay, for the discussion. I'm just wondering about getting Live Barn, like the contact that he was dealing with. If I could get that information from yeah. you, forward it to me. I'm gonna make a call and see what we can work out here. Okay. See if there's anything we can do. And report it back. Okay. For the discussion. Can I continue? Oh, you have more. Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> The three zero zero nine five Swan Valley Collision in Glass one thousand dollars ninety two cents. Was this just a uh, fender bender? Did it involve any other vehicle or people? Is it just the that was a stolen vehicle that was recovered and repaired? Okay. Okay. Um, <coughs> the three zero one zero five Swan Valley Crisis Center thousand dollars grant check voided as group rescinded request. I thought that resolution went through. It did, but yeah. the. They had received uh, an additional funding from the government and they phoned me and said that they wouldn't feel right but taking the money so they turned it back to the town of Swan River. Wonderful. That's uh, nice to hear. Um, 30112, the lift station regular maintenance. So again, my question is just uh, being its regular maintenance, is this something that's done monthly, quarterly, annually? It's required to check the natural gas engines at the lift stations annually, yes. Annually, okay. Uh, 30113 ESRSS, $1,396.50 for co-ed volleyball gym and equipment rental. That one I'll have to get back to you. Okay, I'd really like to know. That would traditionally That's direct rents the gym and the volleyball equipment to hold volleyball games at the RSS yeah. every year. There's a, the co-ed volleyball league mm -hmm. that the recreation department puts on. Yeah, you can all see if we'll get it up. 
Uh, yeah, that, it was a program that used to be done run by the Swan Valley District Recreation Commission, but then that commission got disbanded. So the, the town of Swan River has taken on some of those projects. So the teams uh, paid registration fees that came to the town and then the town paid the gym rental costs. Thank you. Um, the next one is under, I think it's the Royal Bank visa. So the Life Saving Society, Manitoba, $1,067 life saving and first aid manuals, bronze medals. I'm assuming that's for our lifeguard training. <coughs> program. Yeah. Yep. And then there's a few here that my question, I'm not opposed to us supporting our CAO going to Manitoba Municipal Administrators conferences, but between March 15th and it looks like March 24th, it looks like there was maybe two different uh, meetings or conferences you had to attend. Is there some way we can talk to MMA and maybe combine them into... Uh, no, that's just when we pay for them. The, the Municipal Administrators Conference is the first week in May, or Monday, Tuesday. Uh, it was paid for on March 15th, and the administrators put on a workshop for protecting your bottom line due to the uh, fraud that has happened recently, for lack of a better word, and uh, I attended that training. Okay, but so these occurred at the same time? Uh, no, I've. It, it was two weeks ago I attended the Protecting Your Municipality's Bottom Line workshop, and I paid for the conference that I will attend for the first two days in May on March. Oh, okay, so these ones later in March are actually for pre-payment? Right. Okay, yeah. um, then I guess that's okay. I was just thinking if they were that close together, like could they not maybe be a little more efficient right. um, and get them going at the same time? Um, 30124 Sapatoya Cree Nation Development, 4002. 2826, a refund credit on account. CFO Ganita, do you have that? Uh, they paid more than what they owed to the town, so we refunded the credit. Okay, thank you. And 30126, Swan Hills Properties Appraisals, $546 for monthly storage fee for impounded vehicles. Are these new vehicles, different vehicles? This should be the last payment as they were, actually I was away so I didn't actually confirm that they are out of that lot. Yeah, I don't know. It must be with your but I was told that the mm -hmm. final payment would come through one more meeting and this should be it. Okay, I'm hoping to say, I'll confirm that I'm one. hoping to not have to ask this question next month. And then 30144, Quick lift towing. Oh, CFO Ganita. Uh, CFO Ganita, then go ahead. Uh, yeah, we, we paid a, a towing company to tow those vehicles to the, the fire training site, which is probably what. Is the next one I'm about to ask about. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so then this should conclude seeing that on the finances. Um, 30150, Star and Times, 2000. $401.77, ads and job postings, town notice and bylaws. I have a question. Do we by chance talk to the Star Times about arranging for a advertising contract with them? We do. Okay. We tell Paige at the last Tuesday of every month. Okay, but do we contract with them for anything in addition to that? Anything in addition to the town page is their fees. I'm going to maybe suggest or recommend we look into that because I know for my small business I contract with them an annual and then I have monthly payments that break it down to but I basically give them a target range for budget that I have available and then they work out print social media any type of advertising format that you're interested in and they give you kind of a package deal and I make monthly payments so I'm just wondering because we do have the because um, I think this was a town notice one as well as some job ads and some bylaw <coughs> postings. We do regularly have bylaws, special hearings, that kind of stuff coming up. Is it possible to maybe reach out and see if we can negotiate a contract uh, and maybe save some money? It might mean a monthly payment, but 
I could talk to Brian and pull up our history and see what, what we can do. I'm just thinking it might be a way to save a few dollars if we can. Okay, for the discussion. Um, yeah, I have a couple more. Okay. 30151 Swampaw Refrigeration and AC, $13,832. Pool Dectron Arena Compressor Town Office Heater. What did they have going on there? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming the, the most of that is in the Pool Dectron unit. Uh, the Town Office Heaters get maintenance once a year, <clears throat> or it could be the Arena Compressor. I'm, I'm not sure. The, there's a big chunk on the ones with the Pool or the Arena. I'd have to pull up the invoice and get back to you. But the town office is just a maintenance of the units downstairs. It happens annually. Okay, so is that this is it an annual service for the pool and the arena as well, or is that no, no, that would be a repair. Okay, I wouldn't mind knowing the um, info on those. And then under the Schedule E direct deposit payments. March 30th, Workers' Compensation Board, 9,155.52. It's the 2022 account statement balance due. Is that just worker comp dues? Sorry, which, which one are you on? March 30th, Workers' Compensation Board. Schedule E direct deposit. Oh, sorry. Oh, okay. Yeah. <coughs> Yes, yeah, that's our cost to WCB. Okay, and so that's just an annual payment. Uh, I'm assuming that's accounted for in the 2022 budget? Yes. Okay. And then the last one is the Saskatchewan Urban Municipalities, $315 for the career posting for a recreation director. Is that something that got uh, posted, published throughout Saskatchewan or just key target areas within? Uh, the major centers and the, the municipal urban municipalities website or whatever that is, the postings that that organization allows advertisements on. The, the goal was Manitoba and Saskatchewan. Yes. Yeah, no, and I don't have any problems with that. I was just wondering what the yeah. range was for advertising that. Thank you. Further discussion? Go ahead. Uh, just to speak a little bit around about the impoundment vehicles there. So in the future, are we still leaning towards the, the uh, vehicles picked up that it goes to an impound, or do we, no. have, do we have another avenue? No, that like all of this snowballed. So it was get those vehicles off now. I didn't know that it was a thirty day. Uh, at the time, it was just get those vehicles off. So we did. Uh, I didn't know we, we only had to have them for thirty days. If I knew that, they just would have went to a landfill of public works. Okay. Or, for that site initially, as soon as I found that out, then it was snow time and they covered in snow on access and public works couldn't go out there and get them, so we had to pay to go get them. Just it snowballs when we do not do the research. Okay, perfect example. In the future that's not gonna happen. No. Okay, thank you. Further discussion? <clears throat> All in favor? It's carried. Thirteen. Resulted pursuant to sections 152.3 of the Municipal Act. Council going to committee and close the meeting to the public. Uh, items for discussion are personnel and also council. So uh, with that, move by. Councilor Medwood, seconded by Councilor Boychuk. All in favor? It's carried. Uh, this one is all the regular. Result of this regular meeting in council will now be adjourned at 10:01 p.m. Moved by Councillor Boychuk, seconded by Councillor Powell. She wants to just mad. <laughs> She's mad because they lost. <gasps> Did they oh, lose? They, they lost. lost. They lost. Oh. oh. Yeah. Not, it takes so long. <laughs> That's three hours or whatever. It's sort of, this is early. This is I early. Two yeah. over. I missed the game. Two overtimes. They needed to win that first one. Only favor. Time. We're now adjourned. I'm so